Yo, what's up guys, Boss here, and I'm back on the YouTube video, and this time we're going to be playing some top ladder using a 2.5 minor wall breaker cycle deck. I think on my thumbnail, uh, it said 2.6 fast cycle, but it's 2.5, I switched it out, the zap for the delivery, and the reason why I did that is because there's a ton of people in the top 10 using zap instead of delivery. You can see Enigma here using a 2.5 uh, minor wall breaker deck, the same one I'm using, same with Moogie here, who's third in the world. And I just like Zap better because I feel like there's a lot of Ice Bow in this meta. And just Expo in general is so much easier to beat when you have the Zap instead of the Delivery. And I also think Zap is good for extra Tower Chip because with the Delivery, of course, it's used on defense only, not on offense at all. Of course, this means you are going to have a harder time defending things like maybe Golem pushes, Giant pushes, things like that. But you do have the Bomb Tower, which is insanely strong. And the perfect time to use this deck is now when the Bomb Tower is still really really good because i think the bomb tower in the next balance is getting a small nerf but in my opinion it's still going to be a really strong card it's just not going to be as dominant because you know the lifetime of it is going down by a little bit but usually people play the bomb tower reactively and they don't pre-place it so i don't think it's going to affect the card too much in my opinion but we're going to have to see i think it's still going to be a strong a very very strong card but yeah this is deck xop sam used to finish number one uh, the deck XOP Sam used to finish number one last season. We're going to go ahead and search for the first game. I'm a little lower than I anticipated when I started recording this video. But I wanted to do one more ladder video um, before the season ended. Because I already didn't upload the last couple of days. And I thought if I didn't upload today and tomorrow. Um, or the day after tomorrow. You know, it would have been like four or five days that I didn't upload. So I just wanted to do, you know, one more video. Um, and then I think after this... I'm probably not going to upload again until the season's over or um yeah i'm not going to probably stream or upload again until the season's over but um i thought it would be good to get this video out today anyway we're gonna go in here because he used his log so we that means we can go in for wall breakers and it looks like he's using 2.6 which is very very surprising 2.6 is extremely off meta in my opinion um you pretty much never see it so we do have the bomb tower which is surely going to get some good value here in this matchup but his musketeer is going to get some great value for him so we need to try to get rid of that um maybe with miners and stuff like that or possibly go opposite lane of the musketeer and the key to this matchup too is to switch up your bomb tower placements because if you keep going for a low bomb tower they'll eventually go for prediction fireballs and stuff like that so you want to make sure you occasionally are playing high bomb towers unless they have a musketeer or something like that supporting so that was a pretty costly defense for him i mean he had to spend six elixir to counter five and we got a minor hit so that wasn't really the best for him and we can play a low bomb tower again i actually ideally would want to play it one town more to the right but because i'm playing the bomb tower a little late just to make sure that I'm getting it down in time, I'm uh, playing it one tile more to the left. But if I have Bomb Tower and Cycle right when he plays a Hog, I'll play it a tile more to the right. So then that way, the right tower is helping out when shooting the Hog Rider. But we have a really, really nice lead here. We're going to log. Um, we're going to go for a low Bomb Tower. This is what I was talking about. We play it a tile more to the right. So the other tower is helping out. It's not even really necessary since he's not fireballing the bomb tower, but if he were fireballing the bomb tower, the placement I was doing before would allow the hog to get a hit. Okay, so we're going to keep up the pressure when you're, you know, versing 2.6. You want to be really aggressive. Um, and what's very, very odd to me is that he hasn't used his musketeer yet. I'm actually... Did... Uh, okay, guess he gave up. Um... That's a good game, I guess. I don't really know what, what, he, what he was doing. I mean, I was questioning a lot of the plays he was making. I wonder if he mistakenly used 2.6 and he normally doesn't use it, but I don't know what the deal is, but he gave up and so we win the first game pretty easily. Um, yeah, again, I don't know what happened there. Um, but GG, let me see. Like, was his Musketeer under leveled or something? I, I don't know what the reason would be. As to why he didn't use the Musketeer that whole game. He had Musketeer. He had it leveled up. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's like on a little bit of a tilt. I mean, I'm on a slight tilt as well. But he, um, I don't really know what happened that game. But anyways, let's go on to the next game. We're going to be versus Ghost Rider. So we want to start the game off pretty aggressive. So we're going to go Minor Bats. 
it's fine to, in my opinion, uh, start the game off with minor bats, minor wall breakers. Because you have the bomb tower, which is just such a strong defensive card, you're not really going to be punished too badly if you start the game off with minor and another cheap card when you have the bomb tower as a way to defend almost anything. So he's going to be using a pretty fast cycle wall breaker deck too, it looks like. The question is, is, is he going to have delivery or is he going to be using the same variant as I am? That's the only thing we are unsure of. Or is he going to be using poison? If he has poison, things are actually going to be a little bit... I'm going to log just in case he has a zap. Okay, we didn't need it. But it's fine anyway because, oh my goodness, that was not a good play on his part. He just gave us such good zap value. We're going to go in here, see if it forces... Okay, log. We're not going to wall breakers in that lane. In fact, I was just about to play them in the other lane, but... I think, um, uh, yeah, let's bomb tower this. It's fine because he spent five elixir. We're countering it for four. Let's go wall breakers opposite lane. See if we can get them to connect or at least force some elixir out of him. He's going to just straight up ignore them. So I'll take it. We now have the lead. Got a ton of damage in the right lane. I don't know why he ignored them. I guess he didn't really want to commit any elixir to stop them but i think if i were him i would have been willing to spend a couple to make sure they don't connect um so he does here let's actually zap these get them off the board see if we can get some damage with the bats on top of his tower potentially and now we're gonna go minor if he goes for i was gonna say a log i would have played wall breakers immediately after but he didn't we're gonna go wall breakers opposite lane it's gonna log them this time all right and yeah he is going to have the poison variant so this is actually going to be a very tough matchup especially now that we're in um Oh, I didn't catch the miner. That's not good. I was going to say, this is going to be a tough matchup because the poison gets so much value versus our swarm cards. So this is definitely not going to be easy. But with that being said, that was a really, really nice miner connection. Um, getting us loads of damage. And we catch his miner. So things are sh uh, slowly but surely potentially going our way here. We're gonna log. I we're not hitting all the spear goblins, but I think it's really important that we're hitting the tower and getting chip damage. We catch the miner again. If we continue to catch the miners, we're gonna win most likely. We just gotta keep catching the miners. We're gonna play the miner off to the side this time. He doesn't catch it. Zap getting additional damage on the tower. If we can get into zap long uh, log range, we win. That's not enough damage. The log wasn't enough. Yep, I knew our tower was going to survive with a little bit of HP, so we do manage to win. In my opinion, that is kind of a tough matchup. I think it's slightly in his favor, even though it's a very, very similar deck. The fact that he has Poison, which deals more DPS than Zap and Log combined on his tower, obviously, that you know they're both for Elixir when you go Zap and Log, and a Poison just deals, I think it's 310 damage. Um... Maybe it's 315, something like that. But anyway, it deals way more damage, and I got pretty worried when we got into double. But luckily, we were able to outcycle him a little bit because when he was going really aggressive with those minor poisons, he didn't have enough elixir to defend our miners. We were switching up the placement every time, and we just did a good job of catching his miners. So we managed to get the win there. And yeah, we're working our way, way up. We're going to get to at least 7,200 for sure, Um, I think. We just need one more win here. Now, I've already been to 7200, but we're going to get back there because I dropped a little bit below 7200. We're going to again start the game off with minor bats, and you don't need to play the minor in the safe spot if you're supporting it with bats because even if they have a NATO, they need to spend so much elixir on the bats that even if they activate king, it's kind of worth it because in a way you're, you're out cycling them, if that makes sense. Um, since they had to spend so much elixir, and you can often just get like another push going. So, we're going to go Wall Breakers. He doesn't have Snowball or Log in rotation. It's 
Snowball might have been a bit aggressive on his end. So, I mean, he's going to get some damage, but it's nothing too severe. We're going to have some dueling pressure here. The Knight is obviously still alive, forcing a little bit of Elixir out of him in the left lane. All right, this is going to be tough. I mean, normally Hog EQ isn't that hard to beat, but because he has both Log and Snowball, if he had just one of them, it would be easy, but he has dual small spell. So what that's going to mean is he has a good answer to... We just need to make sure we have enough for a bomb tower. That's what I'm worried about. Okay, we do. So if he goes in for a hog at this point, we can bomb tower... There it is. Hmm. We can go Spear Goblins behind this. Ooh, he logs. And Snowballs. Okay, perfect, perfect. We can go Bats now as well. He just used a ton of his Elixir. He goes Bomb Tower. Don't think he's going to have enough, though. For those Bats. I mean, they get... They're, he stops them, but takes a little bit of damage. That actually was not really that good. I was expecting the bats to get more damage than that. Regardless, though, things are, I guess, are looking okay. I mean... He messed up the earthquake. That was bad, that log. Um, and now, we, d ah, the wall breaker doesn't connect. That sucks a little bit, because if I had that wall breaker connect, potentially could have been what won us the game. Like, if we got, ended up getting that connection, depending on how close this game is, we might have actually won had we gotten it. But we'll see. We might end up winning anyway, but it would have been so nice if we got that connection, obviously. We're going to get a lot of damage on this tower. Several hundred, actually. Oh my goodness, we actually won. That was so close. And again, that's not an easy matchup. Um, I it might he, 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 I don't think he has a hard counter. The thing is, is when you're using a really fast cycle deck like this, there's aren't there aren't many things that hard counter you. You have a lot of soft counters, but that's why this type of deck is really nice to play when you know what to cycle at what times because it allows you to win versus decks that have multiple spells. Because you can see. Um, you know, that one, his poison got a ton of value. This one, you know, he had Earthquake for a Bomb Tower. He had Snowball for a Bats, Log for the Spear Goblins, Bomb Tower for the Wall Breakers. But we still were able to win because we have a slightly faster cycle than him. You know, his deck is 2.9, ours is 2.5. So we're going to be getting things down a bit quicker than he does. And just we're able to fix our cycle a little bit easier. But anyways, we get back to 7,200. We're almost back in the top 1,000. So looking pretty good here. Let's play probably one or two more games. Um, we're versing Bonds, good luck. Um, we don't have a Miner, so we can start with Spear Goblins at the bridge. Make sure to play them one tile to the left of the of the middle of the bridge, because you actually get more damage. If, they, if they're left ignored, you get more damage, one extra hit. So we're going versus Royal Hogs. Um, you know, obviously we do have the Bomb Tower, so ideally this is, should be a pretty pretty easy matchup if I had to say but of course it depends on the variant but it looks like he's using the hunter one so we just need to be careful um we we, we got to make sure he's not getting value uh too much value with his heal spirits but let's get another yeah I had a feeling he was gonna go in again with real hogs Wanted a knight so that Hunter doesn't get damage on her tower when it splashed the Spear Goblins. It didn't get too much. We have a small lead here, but 
I used a ton of elixir on defense, which wasn't good. I had to use a knight and a bomb tower, so spent a little bit more than I would have liked, but I think it's okay. So in this matchup, going opposite lane is okay, um, because you don't want them to... Ooh, 3M. Hmm. I still think we can win, but in this type of matchup, I think it would be better if we had the, uh, the, the real delivery, since it's so good versus 3m but as i said we definitely still can win it's just his 3m are going to get a lot of value we need to be very very careful luckily that was not actually that great of a heal spirit oh i didn't have the elixir wow uh that's i was not expecting that i guess that was a really good play on his end I mean, because clearly it worked out for him. I, I had all though, I, I will say, I was not expecting that to happen. Whatever the heck just happened, I was not expecting that at all. Like, for him to get, have that elixir to go for Royal Hogs when I had nothing. You know, I couldn't even play Baths. He somehow had a huge elixir lead, and I guess the reason why was because he went for, you know, me playing that Zap obviously didn't help, but even if I didn't play it, he still would have gotten so much damage um oh wow we just took his tower so we're still in this we're not in a good spot but we're still in this that's all that matters you know we, we have a chance at coming back yeah i was gonna say i didn't expect those to connect all right i mean we have a chance that's good but you know, clearly <laughs> we're not in the best situation with our tower being in double earthquake range. It's certainly not looking very good. Yeah, it's going to be GG. Well, he played well. That was a really, honestly, it was just one push. I, I Again, I'm a little, I guess you could say speechless. I, again, have no clue what happened, how he had the elixir to go for, like, royal hogs or whatever. Um, when I had like zero pretty much, it, it was, I guess, because what happened is, is I went for minor wall breakers. I think he played skeletons on my wall breakers and I went for a zap, which was a bit of an overcommitment, I think. And, you know, that didn't help because if I were able to get the, if I didn't zap, I would have had elixir to play bats right away, which would have helped a ton stopping those hogs. And who knows, I might've been able to save my right tower and take his right and maybe win, but still think it wasn't like I played it horrible. Again, it definitely isn't easy since I don't have a lot of great answers to his 3M besides the bomb tower, but I need to use that for the Royal Hogs. But he only used the 3M one time, which was quite interesting, or maybe he used it twice, I can't remember. But anyway, let's move on to the next game. Um, I think it was just, again, one small mistake that ended up costing me the game. Just that zap, I think that's all it was. Or maybe it wasn't just the, or maybe it just wasn't the best time to send in minor wall breakers. But regardless, it was, you know, unfortunate. Anyway, he's gonna have Prince and Zap, so this is probably Giant Double Prince. I mean, this isn't gonna be easy, but uh, you can win by getting a ton of value out of the bomb tower and obviously outcycling them. So we're just going to go for minor wall breakers because. This is going to kind of... He doesn't have Prince and Cycle, so he doesn't really have anything to support this giant. He doesn't have um, a Zap back in rotation, so our bats here are going to get a lot of value. The fact that that prince charged on the miner was so, 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 I can't stress it enough, so unfortunate. Because what that allowed him to do was wipe the miner off the board a lot quicker, allowing the prince to get, I think, at least one extra hit on our tower. It could have even been two. So that is very, very, very unfortunate. Not what I wanted there at all. And as a result, we could end up losing the game all because of that. But we'll see. 
Um, you know, it certainly is not over yet, but that was very, very, very unfortunate that that happened. Um, I should have minored all the way in the back instead of off to the side like I did there. Yeah, I mean, we can come back, but I think at this point we almost need a miracle. As I said, though, this is not easy with without us having the delivery. And just Giant Double Prince, you know, it's not good in the meta, but it certainly is very, very annoying to play verse when you're using a deck like I am with a lot of bait cards in it. Um, it's it's tough. The Dark Prince is, is annoying. But we're slowly making a little bit of a comeback here. I mean, we got both of the... We got both of those wall breakers to connect, which I actually wasn't expecting. We're going to just apply a little bit of pressure. Nothing crazy, just wall breakers to force a spell out of him. Allow us to get a lot of value out of our bait cards. And we're actually going to go ahead and try to... No! Did you guys see that? Wow, that was so close to connecting. This is going to be close. Wow, we won. Oh my goodness. That was so close. Wow. Um, I'm lucky he didn't have a log, you know? Like, maybe if he had... Well, he would have... Well, no, because no one really uses double prints with three spells because then you need a log instead of a minor. And I think Double Prince is completely unviable without Miner, but that was crazy close. I actually can't really believe I won that. Um, I might end off with that, um, or maybe do one more, just because it is my last video of the season, so it'll be, you know, a decent length of time. It's been 22 minutes. I'm, I'm fine. I'll, I'm fine doing one more. This will be the last one, win or loss. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm I'm hyped to do one more. That was a really, really nice win. So he's going to have Heal Spirit. Probably means it's going to be a Royal Hog deck. I am ready to redeem myself because, you know, we lost to that 3M Royal Hog deck. Let's try to win it this time around. He's going to have Magic Archer, so he's not going to be using 3M. At least I highly doubt it because no one really uses... Um... So, don't really know how that lined up, but that's not really good. Um, obviously, that he got all that damage, but it's not too big of a deal. You know, it could have been worse. And I think we're just going to go wall breakers here because he's going to have to delivery this. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I was going to say he's using the variant with delivery. And because he decided to cycle his Earthquake, we can be pretty much as aggressive as we want to because um, without him having the Earthquake in rotation, he... Or did I say cycle his Delivery? I meant to say because he cycled his Earthquake. Um, but now I think he has it back in rotation. He's not going to use it, though. Ah... He got that one chip shot from the Magic Archer. Might not be a big deal, but it could be. You never know. With these with these matches, they sometimes can be so close, and just a single Magic Archer shot can end up um, costing you. But I mean, we're you know we're both pretty even right now. He's got a small lead. Um, we're just gonna go Spear Goblins. I think the my main concern this match is obviously his Magic Archer. With me not having a big spell to kill that, I'm pretty worried about how much value it's going to get. I think what we got to do is cycle two, um, is cycle two logs on top of it. That's often the best way to take it out because it's an even trade. Um, and yeah, it's just a good way to make sure it doesn't get any more value than it should. But those are going to get healed up and that uh, might be good game, unfortunately. Yeah, GG. That was not, I guess, the best defense on my end. I needed to log the heal spirit. 
I don't know if I had log and cycle, but it overall wasn't the best defense. It's crazy how I lost to two Royal Hog decks when actually this deck does good versus Royal Hog decks. It's actually the main reason why I um, ended up switching. But, you know, it's not over yet. If he needs to cycle three Earthquakes, then... Oh, I thought those were going to connect so close. Wow. That's crazy. We're getting so close with these wall breakers connecting. Just not enough, I guess. Not a... You know, not a close enough. But yeah, he just needs to cycle back to... Another Earthquake. He's back to it now. Wow, what a close game. He was so close. Um... You know, I, I think it's my matchup. I probably just didn't play the defense perfectly. But alright, uh, that's gonna be it. Um, yeah, for the video. Not bad. I mean, we were higher than where we started. I think I won uh, three games. That's pretty funny how I won against three decks, in my opinion, that counter me. But then I... Or wait, did I... Oh, I won four and lost two. It's weird, I lost to the decks where I think I counter, but then, well no, this one I don't think I do because 3M get a lot of value, but I think this one I definitely had matchups, so that's pretty weird. The ones I lost, I don't really think they counter me too much, but then the ones that I won, in my opinion, they kind of counter a little bit, so that's a little weird. But uh, anyway, good video. Um, again, I think it's, yeah, probably going to be my last video for next couple of days, and then when the season's over... Um, if I do really, really well, um, I'm going for top three finish. If I get a top three finish, I'll probably like I last did last season when I got a top five, I uploaded the replays that caught me there. I'll probably do the same thing. Um, you know, obviously I'm pretty low right now, but you know, anything's possible and I have a lot of time to play. So, um, yeah, still going for top three finish. I mean, there's two and a half days of the season left more than enough time. But anyways, that's going to be it. Make sure to like the video if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And let me know what decks um, you guys want me to test out um, when the balance change starts. Maybe I'll do a giant deck like Giant Double Prince or maybe Giant E-Drag because Prince is getting an HP buff. So I might as well um, test out some deck with Prince. But anyways, thanks again. Until next time, guys.